federal high court in Abuja has dismissed a fresh application for bail filed by the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Khan. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number one, a federal high court in Abuja has dismissed a fresh application for bail filed by the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Khan. Khan, who is currently facing a seven count charge, had in the fresh bail application he filed through his team of lawyers, led by Chief Mike Ozekome, also challenged the revocation of the bill the court earlier granted to him. He asked the court to set aside the order it made on March 28, 2019, which not only issued a bench warrant for his arrest, but also gave the federal government the approval to try him in absentia. Kanu's bill was dismissed on Tuesday by Justice Binta Inyako, who said she was not satisfied with the reason the IPOP leader gave for his failure to appear in court for the continuation of his trial. The court maintained that Kanu must explain the reason why he breached the previous bill that was given to him before he could enjoy another favorable discretion from it. The case has however been adjourned till November 14th for mention to await the outcome of Kanu's appeal. At number two, fire has gutted a warehouse on Broad Street in the CMS area of Victoria Island, Lagos State. The Permanent Secretary of the Lagos Emergency Management Agency, Olufemi Okeo Saintolu, confirmed the incident in a statement on Tuesday. Okeo Saintolu said that the fire was caused by a power surge when electricity was restored, adding that there was no casualty recorded in the incident. He noted that the raised property was a room in a warehouse where shoes are stored. At number three, three persons were burned beyond recognition on Monday night when a fully loaded petrol tanker burst into flames after a crash in Lokoja, Kogi State. An eyewitness said the crash occurred around 8.17 p.m. opposite the Living Faith Church, Felele, along the ever-busy Lokoja Abuja Express Road. It was gathered that the tanker said to be fully loaded with diesel was descending the slopey section of the road when it experienced brake failure, which resulted in the truck ramming into another truck, a Dyna pickup van. The sector commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Stephen Daolong, told newsmen on Tuesday in Lokoja that three persons were burned to death, while two other victims were rescued with bonds and taken to the Federal Medical Center in Lokoja for medical attention, and the corpses deposited at the mortuary. At number four, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps Gombe State Command has paraded no fewer than 20 girls and 14 boys, including minors involved in alleged illicit dance entertainment, popularly known as Gidan Lukachi or Gidan Gala. While addressing journalists on Tuesday, the state commandant, Waziri Goni, said they posed a serious security breach, adding that the command had so far closed over 10 of such dance houses across the state. According to Goni, aside being involved in the said illicit dance, the entertainment house served as an avenue for young girls to practice prostitution. He stressed that many of them came from neighboring states. The commandant disclosed that some of them were married for about one week before jettisoning their marital vows to come into Gombe State. At number five, President Muhammad Buhari will depart Abuja on Tuesday on a state visit to Portugal at the invitation of President Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa. The senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, said in a statement on Tuesday that Buhari will be conferred with the country's national honor and decorated with the great color of the Order of Prince Henry. The statement is titled President Buhari to pay a visit to Portugal, participate in UN Ocean Conference. According to the statement, Buhari will also participate in the United Nations Ocean Conference, which began in Lisbon on Monday, June 27, and runs till July 1st. Buhari will return to Abuja on Saturday, July 2nd. At number six, a high court sitting in Potakot River State has granted bail to the lawmaker representing Degema Boni Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives, Honorable Farad Dagogo, who was arrested by security operatives on the orders of the state governor, Nyesom Wiki. Dagogo, a People's Democratic Party governorship aspirant in the state for the 2023 elections, was granted bail on Tuesday after being incarcerated for 62 days. He was granted bail to the tune of 20 million naira, or a shorty in like sum, with a landed property worth the same amount. Recall that Dagogo was arrested by a team of policemen on April 28, 2022, 
at the venue of the screening exercise for the PDP governorship aspirants in Portacot, less than four days after Governor Nyeso Mwike had reportedly declared him wanted for allegedly hiring suspected cultists to disrupt a screening exercise at the party's secretariat. At number seven, the Senate has ordered the probe of the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, Tanko Mohammed, over corruption allegations raised against him by some justices of the Supreme Court. The Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, mandated the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to carry out the probe on Tuesday. Recall that last week, 14 justices of the Supreme Court leveled allegations of corruption against Mohammed, which the CJN denied. The Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, led by Senator Opayemi Bamidele, has been directed to carry out the probe. At number eight, gunmen stormed a naming ceremony and killed eight people in Sandiaba village, Central East Province, Kopelogo of Burkina Faso. State-owned news agency AIB on Tuesday reported that the gunmen stormed the village, located about four kilometers from Sao Dongin in the province of Kopelogo on Monday. The source said the assailants stormed the naming ceremony and fired into the crowd, killing the eight people. At number nine, gunmen reportedly invaded Nduweguachi community in the Ohauku local government area of Eboi State on Monday. One person whose name was yet to be ascertained as of press time was killed during the invasion. It was gathered that the gunmen equally set ablaze many houses and abducted many others to an unknown destination. An eyewitness who narrated the incident to journalist in Abakiliki said the gunmen invaded the community and started shooting sporadically and in the process killed one person and abducted many others. Lastly, at number 10, no fewer than 46 people suspected to be migrants were found dead inside a truck in San Antonio, Texas on Monday. Al Jazeera reports that it appeared to be a human smuggling attempt along the United States-Mexico border. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood said 16 other people, including four minors, found in the trailer on Monday were transported to the hospital for heat stroke and exhaustion. Hood was quoted as saying, the patients we saw were hot to the touch. They were suffering from heat stroke, heat exhaustion. There were no signs of water in the vehicle. It was a refrigerated tractor trailer, but there was no visible air conditioning unit on that rig. Additionally, police chief William McManus said a city worker at the scene was alerted to the situation by a cry for help shortly before 6 p.m. on Monday. Officers arrived to find a body on the ground outside the trailer and a partially opened gate to the trailer, he said. That's all for today, but before I go, I would like to remind you that the 2023 general elections is drawing closer. Do not fail to get your permanent voters card. See you next time on What's Happening.